All right. This lesson, I would like to do more trigonometry equation solving questions for the students. Um, I feel like some students require more equation solving practice. And um, I would like to show everyone about um, maybe six questions and to, to show how to solve equation properly. All right. So the first question is tangent squared theta equals to one for theta between zero and two pi. So how do we solve this question here? Well, the first thing you do is um, you've got a square here. Right, you want to remove that square. All right, so you want to get to like square root both sides. So the first step here is tan theta is equal to square root or positive negative one square root of one, which obviously we know that positive negative square root of one is just equal to um, one, right? So that gives you tangent theta equals to one, positive negative one. Once we, get, once we get to this point, then what we can do is we can break this question into two parts. All right, so the first part is when 10 theta equals to 1, and the second part is when 10 theta equals to minus 1. And then you, you, know, you solve this question uh, one after the other. All right, so we're going to solve the first one, 10 theta equals to 1. And then remember theta is um, in radium, so everything must be in radium as well. All right, so that's a special angles, right? So the first step, theta is tangent inverse one, and we know the first angle or the first solution is pi on four, because tangent 45 degrees is equal to one. Once you get um, to pi on four, then the next answer um, is according to all station to central. The next one, in this quadrant here, that's the third quadrant, um, the angle that you're gonna use or the angle that the second angle that you're gonna find is 180 degrees plus the first angle you get. But in this case, because we're using radium, so it's gonna be pi plus the angle that you get from previous angle, right? From previous um, answer there. So the second answer will be pi plus pi on four. That will be the second answer. All right, now if we pay attention to the domain here, it's between zero and two pi, then that means there is no more answer after pi plus pi on four. So then you can write down the answer pi on four and five pi on four. So that will be the two answers for 10 theta equals to one. Now, what you need to do is move on to the second part of the question. All right, the second part of the question is, um, what is the answer for 10 theta equals to minus one? Okay, minus one. So we'll do the same thing now, right? Theta is equal to tangent inverse minus one or negative one. All right, and then once you finish that, you can use your um, calculator to work out what is tangent inverse minus one. So the answer you get will be negative pi on four. Okay, negative pi on four. Then according to the rule again, the second answer will be pi plus pi on four. Well, oops, sorry, pi plus negative pi on four. And that will be the second answer. Now, once you get the second answer, it's very interesting to see that uh, according to the domain, uh, the domain is theta must be greater than zero. You can't have an angle that's less than, um, um, you know, zero degrees or zero radium in this case. All right, for this question here, it's not less than zero radiums. So that means the answer you get here, negative pi on four, is not going to be the answer that we are, we want, right? So what we need to do now is we're going to go like three hundred sixty. Um, a full revolution, all right? So we're going to plus the first answer by two pi. Think about a whole revolution. And that means, I mean, the point is not gonna change and you're still gonna get the correct answer, all right? But that means you actually turn the negative, um, you know, the angle into the positive one. All right, so let's do the calculation. Um, obviously this is not gonna be the answer here, so we can just remove it. Don't worry about this answer anymore. Then the next one is pi minus pi on four, and it'll be three pi on four. And the last one is negative pi on four plus two pi. And um, negative pi on four plus two pi is going to be seven pi on the four. All right, so now have a look how many answers you have. One, two, three, and four. So for this question here, we have four answers. All right, so now what I can do is write, you know, rewrite everything in ascending order. So the first answer will be pi on four, three pi on four, five pi on four, and seven pi on four. And that will be the solution for this question, tangent square theta equals to one. Okay, so that's how you solve the first question here. All right. All 
Okay, let's do another one, all right? Let's do a question that's very similar to the, uh, the, the first question. All right, so the next question here, question B, is cosine squared theta equals to one over four. Very, very similar to the previous question. So this time what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna go through the, um, the answer straight away, okay? So you've got a square, all right? So the next step here is I'm just going to square root both sides. That gives you plus minus half because square root of one over four is um, is half and remember you have to put a plus minus all right and then i'm just going to break down into two parts all right the first one is cosine theta is equal to positive half and the second one is cosine theta is equal to um, negative half and you're going to do this calculation separately okay all right so theta is equal to cos inverse half which is 60 degrees, and that means it's pi on 3 for the first answer. All right, and then according to the oscillation to central, cosine is positive um, in the fourth quadrant. And then for the fourth quadrant angle, all right, the way you find this, the, you know, the, the second angle or the second solution will be 2 pi minus the answer that you get from the first one. All right, so I'm just going to use 2 pi and subtract pi on 3. Okay, 2 pi minus pi on 3, which is 360 degrees minus 60 degrees. All right, so the answer you get is pi on 3, and the next one you get is 5 pi on 3. Okay, all right, so we just finished the first one. All right, now move on to the next. So the next one is cosine theta is equal to minus half. All right, cosine theta is going to minus half. Well, still follow the same steps here. That becomes theta equal to cos inverse minus half. And um, you can use a calculator to calculate what's cos inverse uh, negative 0 0.5. It is 120 degrees, okay? 120 degrees by using a calculator. But remember, this is in terms of radian. So what I want to do is to convert this one back into um, radian. Okay, so this is degrees. I'm going to convert that into radian. And 120 degrees is equivalent to 120 over 180 pi. And after you simplify it, it is 2 pi on 3. So the first angle is 2 pi on 3. The next one, you're going to follow the same thing, okay? It will be 2 pi minus 2 pi on 3. All right, so let's do the final calculation. It will be um, 4 pi on 3 here. Okay, it'll be four pounds right here. All right, so that now we can just combine everything together. All right, so theta is equal to pi on three, two pi on three, four pi on three, and the last one is five pi on three. And that would be the final solution or order solution for this question here, cosine squared theta equals to a quarter. Okay, all right. So that's question B. Um, let's change that, that's question A. Oops. Okay, all right. Let's move on to the next one. So the next question, slightly different. So the next question, let's call this is question C. This is the question. Tangent squared theta minus tangent theta minus 2 is equal to 0. And again, you're going to solve for um, theta between 0 and 2 pi. All right, so how do we do this one here? Well, if you just pay attention to that, clearly that becomes a quadratic, it looks like a quadratic you know, expression. Apart from this time, they are using tangent theta instead of like an x. All right, so you do have options, right? You can change that tangent theta equals to x. So it's like, you know, um, you're going to use the substitution method, that x equals to tangent theta. So that gives you x squared minus x minus 2 is equal to 0. All right, and all you have to do is, you know, factorize this expression. You get x minus 2, x plus 1 equals to 0. So the answer is x equal to 2, x equal to minus 1. All right, so once you finish up to here, then you've got two answers. Uh, one x equal to 2, and one x equal to minus 1. Now, you just have to um, solve this question separately. Again, 10 theta is equal to 2. And then tangent theta is equal to minus one. Okay, and I'm pretty sure we have done the previous question, tangent theta equals minus one before. 
All right, and I'll probably just solve that question first. All right, that's just slightly easier. It will be minus pi on four. Okay, so the second answer that you're going to get is pi plus pi on minus pi on four, which is three pi on four, and then the last one is negative pi on four plus two pi. Okay, so there will be seven pi on four. All right, we have done this before, just the last question, so um, I'm not going to show you the working out here. All right, um, how do I get 7 pi on 4? Well, you plus negative pi on 4 by 2 pi, and then that gives you negative pi on 4 plus 8 pi on 4, which gives you 7 pi on 4. Okay, all right, so I just finished the second part. All right, 7 pi on 4. All right, so then the answer will be, 3 pi on 4 and 7 pi on 4, um, because remember that the domain is between 0 and 2 pi, so you kind of have a negative angle here. So we've got two answers here. Now, back to this. How do we solve this one here? Well, this one is a slightly different, because um, tan theta equals to 2. 2 is not a special number that gives you a special angle here. All right, so what you need to do is do adjust your calculator setting to... Uh, from degree mode to the radian mode, all right, before we do the calculation. So theta is equal to tangent inverse 2. And um, if you don't change it, then it's going to be a disaster because you're going to get like angle in degrees, not in radians. All right, so after you use the calculator, you get 1.107 and it continues. All right, 1.107 and a 1, 4 and it goes on. It is not, as you notice, it's not a something in terms of pi. Okay, you need to remember not every radian is in terms of pi. Only some special angles are in terms of pi. All right, so one point one zero seven depends on what the question asks you to do. If it's two decimal places, um, let's do two decimal places. Just make this one a bit easier. If it's two decimal places, then it's one point one one. All right, radian. Then how do we do the second angle here? Well, still the same thing. Doesn't matter if it's in terms of pi or not. The second angle for the tangent equation. It's going to be pi plus, so it'll be pi plus 1.11. Okay, so that gives you 1.11 for the first answer, and uh, you need to plus pi, that gives you 4.25. After you do the rounding, that becomes 4.25. All right, so now that becomes the two answers for this equation. So then, once you finish that, you can just make a conclusion by saying that you know theta is equal to 1.11, 4.25, 3 pi on 4, and 7 pi on 4. And that will be the answer for the, this um, you know, question here. All right? So this question is really special. All right? It requires you to change this question into quadratic first um, before you solve for theta. So you have to solve for x first. Um, once you finish that, don't forget you still have to find the you know the value for theta. And once you finish defining the theta, then you know um, you once you finish finding the value for theta, then you you know you combine all the answers together, and that becomes the final answer to the question. All right. Okay, so let's move on. Question D. This is question D. Because 8 cosine squared x is equal to 2 sine x plus 7. All right, now this question, if you just pay attention to that, all right, you've got square, you've got sine, you've got cosine, it does look like um, this is very similar to the question we just did. Very, very similar. It's like a quadratic. Um, the problem with this is uh, you've got sine and you've got a cosine. They're different. So you can't... You know, use substitution, making x equal to sine, and then you, you try to substitute into cosine, all right? So what you need to do is use trig identity, all right? Trig identity formula to change sine or cos, all right, to one trig ratio, all right? So you can either change the sine to cos or cos to sine, but you do need to pay attention to the question. For this question, definitely I'm going to change cosine to sine because that's much easier, all right? You've got a square there, and it's much, much easier to change it. All right, so... Because sine square x is equal to 1 minus sine square x, all right, due to that Pythagorean formula, sine square x plus cos square x is equal to 1, all right, it's equal to the right-hand side. Once you finish up, now you all you have to do is simply use your algebra to simplify everything, and um, you can see that you get a quadratic 
equation. Okay, you get a quadratic equation like this. All right, so once you get to this point, what you can do now is to um, solve this equation. Um, you can let sin x equals to a if you want. You can let that equal to a or b or c. It doesn't matter which letter you use. As long as you understand this becomes a quadratic. All right, and then you try to solve this one. Okay, let's solve this one here. So 2, 4, 1, 1. And I'm just using the cross method to solve um, this question here. So that gives you 2a plus 1 and 4a minus 1 is equal to 0. All right, so now a is equal to minus half for the first one and a is equal to positive 1 over 4. All right, so now we've got two answers here. So we've got two sets of solution and we're going to solve the question, um, you know, step by step, right? So back to here, sine x is equal to minus half. I'm going to solve that one first, and then I'm going to solve for sine x equal to a quarter. All right, so sine x equal to minus half. x is equal to sine inverse minus half, um, which after you use your calculator, you are going to get, um, what do you get here, minus half? You get um, negative 30 degrees, but it's in radians, so it's negative pi on 6. All right, now next one, all station to central. Second answer, this is sine question. So the next question, uh, the next answer will be pi minus, minus the original, all right, or the previous answer here. So it's minus and minus pi on six. Okay, next, um, as you can see, that's a negative number here. I don't want negative numbers. So what we need to do is we're going to use two pi plus that negative pi on 6. So this is very important. Okay, all right, so what we now need to do is to remove the previous answer. Uh, this is not the answer we like to use. I would like to use the, all right, the other two answers. So pi minus minus pi on 6 is 7 pi on 6. And then the next one is 2 pi minus pi on 6. Um, that gives you 11 pi on 6. All right, so that's how you do the first one. Now you're going to move on to the second one. So sine x is equal to 1 over 4. All right, so x is equal to sine inverse 1 over 4. Again, this time you're going to use your calculator to change that um, into the correct, you know, measurement for angles. It's in radian, so change it into radian. And you get 0. 0.25 if it's to two decimal places 0 0.25 in radian so the second answer will be pi minus 0 0.25 so we've got 0 0.25 as the first answer and pi minus 0 0.25 which is 2.88 or two decimal places will be 2.89 all right so we've got one two three and four four answers for this question day all right so yeah, as you can see it's not that easy all right it takes a long time to do it um and so if you made one little mistake in the previous uh, you know solving equations then you're not going to make you know to these points your answer will be completely different to the correct answer so make sure you know how to solve the quadratic properly so as you can see now it's everything's connected together um if you come to the quadratic equation solving you can't really solve this question here all right Let's move on to the next question. All right, so what's the next question here? Um, let's have a look. So the previous question is D. Now let's move on to question E. Okay, question E. This is question E. So how do we do this? Sine, cosec, difference. Okay, so I can't do anything right now. All right, they're different. You're going to make them the same. That's the, all right, that's the M. But sine and cosec, they're related to each other. All right, so 3 sine A is equal to, cosec to A is 1 over sine A. 
change that to trig identities. All right, once you get to this point, you can now times both sides of the equation by sine a. So multiply everything by sine a. And multiply here by sine a. And what are you going to get? It's going to get a quadratic again. All right, so that gives you 3 sine square a is equal to 1 plus 2 sine a. 3 sine square a minus 2 sine a minus 1 is equal to 0. All right, so once you get to this point, now you can do the substitution. Let sine a equals to x. So you've got 3x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals to 0. All right, so the usual process, let's solve this equation. So everything now becomes very standard, you know, step. Um, you change it into quadratic and you solve the quadratic equation. You get the result and you solve the trigonometry equation. So that gives you x minus 1, 3x plus 1 is equal to 0. So x equal to 1, x equal to minus 1 third. All right, let's continue to solve this question now. So we need, we need to break down it into two parts. Sine a is equal to 1, and we'll solve this equation. So a is equal to sine inverse 1, which is pi on 2. All right, sine inverse 1 is pi on 2. All right, now the next answer is pi minus pi on 2, which now becomes really interesting, because pi minus pi on 2 is pi on 2 again. All right, so we don't really need to do this part. It's pi on 2 again. They're the same answer, so don't worry about it. All right, next. Um, the next one is sine a is equal to minus 1 over 3. So a is equal to sine inverse minus 1 over 3. You don't expect this is going to be a nice number. Um, so use your calculator. It's negative 0 0.34 or 339. All right, so the next one will be pi minus minus 0 0.34. So what you can do is you can save this answer in your calculator and you can use that later, all right? And the last answer here will be 2 pi plus negative 0 0.34. Because remember, we don't want a negative number. So that's not the correct answer here because the domain, all right? So the first answer we get from here is 3.48. And the next one will be 2 pi plus the answer. The answer is 5.94. Okay, 5.94. Yep. Okay, all right, so how many answers do we have for this um, for this question here? We've got 1, pi on 2, we've got 3.48, and we've got 5.94. All right, another typical question where you need to modify your equation a bit using trig identities, and uh, once you finish that, you are going to... Change it into quadratic, solve the quadratic equation, get the result, solve the equation using a calculator. Okay. All right, so we're going to do one more. Um, last one. This is question E. All right, the last one is question F. And what is question F? Um, here is question F. Okay, how do we solve this? Um, x is still between 0 and 2 pi. If you look at this one, how do we solve it? You've got sine squared, you've got sine x, you've got cos x. Now this becomes a bit tricky. If you try to change sine square x into, you know, a 1 minus cos square x, yep, you can change that part. But the problem with that is you can't really do anything about the sine x. That's, that's not going to work. So you can't change everything to cosine x. And then there's no way you can change cosine x to sine x. Um, not, well, you can change it, but it's not going to work all right, for a question like this. You can use the complementary angle format to change it. So what we need to do is to think about divide every single term by sine square x. Okay, by sine square x. Or we can divide every single term by cosine square x. Which one is better? Um, maybe it's cosine square x is better, so you get a tangent. All right, so let's just divide everything by cosine square x and see what's happening. So you've got sine squared x divided by cosine squared x plus sine x cos x divided by cos square x. 
and then obviously zero divided by cosine squared x is equal to zero. For the first term, you're going to get tangent squared x. And for the second term, let's have a look what do you get. Cos squared x cancel with cos squared x, but you still have cos, cos x. Okay, you still have cos x on the denominator. So you're going to get 10x as a single term and is equal to zero. Now this becomes much easier to solve because it's just quadratic and all you have to do is factorize to this form. So now you solve each factor and so 10x is equal to zero and then 10x is equal to minus one. All right, so after you get to this point, you just solve the question like we solve it normally, okay? All right, so let's just solve it here. So the first one is 10x equals to zero and x equal to zero for the first answer. And the next answer according to all station to, um, you know, all station to central, it is pi plus zero, which is pi. All right, so the next one is tangent x is equal to minus one and x is equal to minus pi on four. I believe it's maybe 45 degrees. Uh, let me check. Yes, that's correct. Um, so now when you get to this point, um, how do we do the next answer? It will be pi plus minus pi on four. And the last one is be two pi plus minus pi on four. All right, so remember this is not the answer because it's not in the correct domain. So we've got two more answers at the end. It will be three pi on four and um, two times by four is eight, seven pi on four. So now we've got one, two, three, and a four, four answers. So theta or x is equal to zero, three pi on four, seven pi on four, and pi. Okay, all right, so that's all. Um, that's all the questions I would like to show everyone how to do it. So I believe though those questions are tricky, all right, they're hard. Um, if you want to do those questions that you definitely need to know how to solve the normal trigonometry equations like the standard one without a square without a quadratics now once you get used to those um, way of solving it you should be able to solve those like square questions um, with those like quadratic equation questions but something that you need to be very careful about is remember the rule the first step use calculator to get the first answer second step is use all station to central to get you the second answer and then the last step is to check the domain. Sometimes you need to plus, sometimes you need to minus two pi to the first and the second answer to get more answers at the end. All right. Okay. That's all I want to teach you this lesson. All right. Thank you.